Today I'm going to be making a mold out of aluminum filled epoxy. So I, as I mentioned, I'm going to work on making a mold out of aluminum filled epoxy today. Th there are a couple of reasons I'm going to do that. The main one is that I know there are a lot of people who don't have easy access to CNC machines or can't afford CNC machines, they really want to use a 3D printer to create 3D printed injection molds. The problem is that these 3D printed injection molds do not hold up very well. So I wanted to do some experimenting with aluminum filled epoxy, which is a lot stronger than 3D printed parts. And because it's aluminum filled, it also has better thermal conductivity than 3D printed parts. So it should be able to wick the heat away better than a 3D printed part. So I'm gonna take you through the process of what I'm trying to do. This is a part that I'm making for Rulon. It's actually kind of a, a version of a part, a mold that I made for him previously, where he has a brush and a overmold onto the brush. In this case, he wants to do an overmold onto two brushes so it's double-ended. So let me head to the computer and I'll show you what we're going to do. This is the part that we want to make and it is actually going to have a brush coming out this side and this side. So one of the things that I did is I made a box for it and the epoxy is going to take up the, the space here. This is where the wire from one brush will come out and the wire for the other brush will come out. And then this is where the sprue will come in to feed plastic into the part. Now the idea that I have is that I want this to be well supported on the back, but I also want a place where I can pour epoxy in from the back and also be able to push this out uh, if I have problems with the epoxy and I want to remake it without having to make another mold base. So to get there, the first thing that I did is I created the uh, the master, as you see here, let me hide this. And so the master is a mirror image of what I eventually want it to be. And so the idea is that I'll pour the epoxy around this, and then it'll create the cavity that will be filled with the plastic. And so here's where the wire from one side comes in and from the other side, and then this is where the, the sprue comes in to fill it. The next thing that I did is I made the, the back and then I used some Boolean, let me hide the master, to create the volume that will be for the epoxy. And the reason I did that is so that I could measure how much I needed. So if I go to properties, as soon as I find properties, there it is, this will give me the volume of it, as well as other properties, as soon as it finishes. So here I have the volume in cubic inches, and I was able to convert that to fluid ounces, uh, which is what's there. Uh, actually, that's not fluid ounces. But anyway, I converted it to fluid ounces to figure out how much epoxy I needed to mix up. I started by printing this version, and you can probably see here I had some issues with the resin filling in some of the letters, and I wasn't sure what was going on there. Also seemed like there were some bubbles. But the more important thing is that I noticed that this was not exactly round. Uh, it seemed to be squashed a little bit. I also wanted to test to see how well the, the aluminum filled epoxy can conduct heat. So I decided to go with a larger version. And this is the second version that I printed. You can see I still had problems with filling in. I tried to uh, pick it out with a, a sharp pick. But the other thing I noticed is that this was even less closer to being half round. So for some reason this was squished in the Z direction more as I made this area larger. After exchanging an email with the craftsman, he sent me some articles that uh, helped me understand what was going on. And the end result is I decided to print this at a 45 degree angle. And that certainly helped a lot with the letters. The letters came out perfect. Uh, this also came out correct. So you can see this is half round. But you can also see the other problem, which is that I got a lot of warping and distortion on the bottom. It was printed this way. 
and I was using the standard supports, which were clearly not enough to keep this so that it didn't deform. And that leads me to the latest version, which I'm showing you before taking the supports off. I removed a number of the default or the generated supports and put in much thicker ones than the standard ones and put in more of them along here to try to eliminate the warping. And you can see that there's a tiny bit of warping left, perhaps, uh, but it's not very much. I'll take this off the sprues and then I'll find out for sure. Now, if that's the case, I can put in even more supports, or what I might do is put a slight angle on this, because this is going to be under the aluminum anyway. So, if I put a slight downward angle, kind of like a chamfer, then the warping that exists on this part won't matter. This view makes it a little bit, uh, probably a little bit easier to see the difference between those. So you can see this is squashed, and then over here, this is a full half circle. Again, I don't know exactly why the difference between these. You can see that, for whatever reason, this is also thicker than this is. So I definitely need to do more investigation, more looking around to try to understand why I'm getting the Z distortion in this. I haven't done measurements to see if uh, tipping at 45 degrees is actually moving the distortion. For this part, it doesn't really matter, so I'm probably okay. The other thing I want to do is to look to see how flat this is. I can do that with a steel rule. So if I look on this side, well away from the supports, you can see that this is flat. There's no air in between, or no light in between. If I go over here as well, I can't do it like this, so I have to kind of put it this way. And again, it looks like it's perfectly flat. If, on the other hand, I go over here to the bottom, you can probably see there's a little bit of distortion just by looking already. And if I put the steel rule on here, you can see that there is a gap right there. It's quite clear now. So this obviously isn't flat. I'm going to redo this yet another time, and I think I'll also put a bit of a chamfer on here. Putting a chamfer on here will ensure that if there is a little bit of distortion left over, at least I it's not critical because the aluminum actually comes to, I think, about here. I'll have to check on the 3D model. So I'm going to head back to the computer, make that change, do another print, and hopefully that'll turn out. This is the new master that I just printed. You can see I made it, well, maybe you can't, but I made it a little bit smaller. It didn't need to be quite so large, and one of the reasons for making it smaller is to see if I could reduce the distortion here. I'm still getting a little bit of distortion there. So what I did is I added a 45 degree chamfer, as you can see there. And the idea of that is that even though there might be some warpage near the bottom of the chamfer, at the top it would be perfectly flat. And that turned out to work out quite nicely. I put some heavy supports here to try to minimize the, the warp, but you know, as you can see, it still got a little bit of warp. And again, it won't make a difference. It'll work just fine. So this is going to go on the bottom of this, and it is oriented like so. Get it lined up. And then what I want to do is clamp this firmly in place, and that will hopefully keep the epoxy from leaking out. But the first thing I want to do, oh yeah, and then I'll pour the epoxy into this side. The first thing I want to do is I want to apply some mold release to both this part and also to the block. And the reason I want to apply mold release here is if there are problems with this, I'll be able to push this out and then pour the new uh, half of the mold. This is the mold release that they recommended to go along with the epoxy cast 655, which is the aluminum filled epoxy that I'm using. So it is an aerosol, and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and spray it on here and on there, and then I'll come back and we'll pour, I'll mix up some epoxy, and then I'll pour it in. The part A of the epoxy, which has the aluminum in it, has to be mixed thoroughly before you can use it. And they recommend 
something that has flat sides and a flat bottom. So that's what I'm doing here, trying to mix this up for at least two minutes. Once I had it thoroughly mixed, I can put some into a smaller container. This container allows me to put in about one and a half ounces, which is a little bit more than I need for filling the mold. And after a few more times, this is the last uh, little bit that I had to put in to get the one and a half ounces that I needed. Next, I needed to weigh it because I need to pour in an amount of hardener that is a specific proportion of the weight of the part A. That proportion is called out on the container, as you can see here. It's calling out for 100 parts A to 8 parts B by weight. I poured the part A into a larger container. The idea that I had is I was going to use a vacuum to pop the bubbles. I'm not going to show that because what I discovered is that for whatever reason, I couldn't get the bubbles to pop. So once most of this has poured into the container, then I come back with the stick that I used for stirring. And I want to scrape all of the material out of this to make sure that I'm getting as close to the weight ratio as I can that I calculated. I then measured the part B, which unfortunately I didn't turn the camera on for that segment, so you'll have to trust me. And then I poured that into this same container. And then very thoroughly mixed the combination. This has a working time or a pot time of four hours, so there's plenty of time to thoroughly mix things. There's no need to hurry at all. What I want to do now is put this in place, like so. Then I want to make sure that this is very firmly clamped. So I have a piece of aluminum that I can put underneath it as a clamping block. And then I have these can't twist clamps. So I'm going to put one of them right there where I have the, the runner or the sprue to make sure that that's clamped really well because I don't want anything leaking out there. And then I'll add clamps to the other side in three places like so. So it'll be a three-point clamp. Okay. And then give them a good gronk, as Tom Lipton would say. Make sure that these are tight. And then I'm looking along here. And that looks good. I don't see any gaps. So the next thing is to turn it over like this. And because of these, I can actually you know, change the angle ever so slightly. So this is actually leaning a little bit. So this is down. And this is up, which is good because that'll help with the filling. And so now what I want to do is uh, take this, I'm going to get rid of uh, this and put it into an, an old bucket. What I want to do is I want to have a small stream uh, that goes into there because the small stream will help break the, the air bubbles that are in there. So I'll get it started. And I guess you, it's kind of hard to see at the angle you're at, but uh, go back and forth and you can see, let me uh, stop this and uh, reposition the camera. The idea is that by having a thin stream like that, the stream is small enough that the air bubbles will pop as they're going down. And so this takes a long time to pour. So fortunately, the pot time for this uh, epoxy is about four hours. So there's plenty of time to pour it. But even if uh, some bubbles still do get in there, I'm going to put this into a pressure pot at 50 PSI overnight so that it will basically squeeze the bubbles out and you won't see any bubbles in the final 
uh, poor, at least that's the way it should work. I decided not to fill it all the way to the back because I was thinking I'd have to send that off and as you'll see that wasn't the best choice. Here's the uh, pressure pot that I'm using and Rulon lent this to me. So I'm going to take the top off and then put the mold down inside there. Just to be safe I'm going to put a little piece of plastic underneath in case it leaks. I don't think it will but doesn't hurt. And better safe than sorry, right? So then I'll put the mold down here, make sure that these are completely tight. And then I can put the lid on. Then I'll connect the air to here and pressurize it to 50 psi and leave it that way overnight. 24 hours later, which is how long it takes to fully cure, I can take this apart and hopefully, assuming I put enough of the mold release on, I'll be able to release the master from the mold. So here's the moment of truth. What I'm going to do is get a knife and just pry it underneath here and this should pop off like so. Perfect. So let me give you a close-up and you can see how this turned out. Here's a close-up and you can see this turned out just beautifully. I mean there's a little bit of a smudge over here which is really just the mold release and you know, there's still some mold release on here. But uh, the mold itself turned out just, just beautifully. So I'm really happy with the results. This is, by the way, what it looks like on, on the back side. I didn't fill it all the way. The idea is that I have a smaller opening on the back, so the back is mostly supported, but I have a place where I can pour. And in the future, I, I might make this a little bit smaller. The opening doesn't need to be that large. In any event, there is another step for this mold before I can use it. And that is, it needs to be uh, treated in an oven. Basically, I have to bring it up to one temperature. I have to look up what temperature that is for a certain amount of time and then a higher temperature for a bit longer time. And that will uh, make sure that it has the complete high temperature properties. So I'm going to do that next. The instructions that I followed call for baking these after they have had time to cure to bring them up to the full heat resistance. And so I put it into the oven two hours at 150 degrees Celsius and uh, three hours at 300 degrees Celsius, I think it was. I'd have to look it up to be sure. But the thing that's important is that if you look carefully here, you might be able to see a gap. Uh, so this has kind of changed shape a little bit. And I can feel that there's a ridge so that this is no longer flush. It was flush before I did the, uh, the baking of the mold. So I'm not very happy with that. Um, what I'm going to do, therefore, is uh, sand these down on some sandpaper to try to get them flat again and uh, see if that improves things. I have a cheap granite plate here. I'm not calling it a surface plate because this is just a cheap uh, granite plate that I'm using, uh, so it's flat enough. Uh, so I, I, this is what I put sending paper on top of. Uh, so then when I send something, I know it's going to be flat enough. Now at this point, I'm going to put on a respirator because, you know, sanding epoxy is not something I want to, to breathe. When I uh, flipped this one over to start sanding, I ran into 
the following. So you can see it definitely shrank. Uh, we can actually see that there was a bit of an air bubble here, which was on the high side, which was no problem because this is on the, the back side. But clearly before we try injection molding with this, I'm going to need to glue this in. Well, here goes. Let's see what we can get happening. So we got that, we got that. And then we're doing this, right? Well, yeah. That's kind of a dance. Let me see if I can lift these edges. Oh yeah, you probably need a riser on it. <clears throat> Looks like uh, the need for a jig. Yeah, probably, huh? To lay it in properly and set everything. I don't want to pinch anything wrongly. Oh, that's pretty... We've got a lot of play. Uh, but once you... Uh, Should we clamp? Can you, can you try clamping without... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll super clamp here. Yeah, then we can see uh, how much it clamps. All right, and we'll just... Okay, so that's no inject pressure. That's Alex. just a t Yeah, that actually seemed like it closed it up. Okay, so we can give it a try? Yeah, we can probably give it a try. And then you probably want to increase the holding a little bit. Yeah, I've got the holding at 100, and I'll inject the pressure to where we were at about uh, 55. Let's see what happens. And we're gonna keep the same inject time as we did on the, well, this is a bigger part. Let's go to three second. And then hold time will also increase a second. We're pretty hot. We're still coming down from our high, so. Yeah, so <clears throat> we'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. Let's try it. Oh, oh -ho! hey. <laughs> that was interesting. I did not expect that. And we didn't hold long enough, I don't think. But, but it worked. It did work. It overmolded beautifully. It didn't leak out the sides very well. We got flashed from the top, and that's probably why it. Why did we squeeze out? That's a little odd. You know what? That is a usable part with a little trimming. Yeah, you can feel it's, it's uh, transferred some of the heat to the, uh, yeah. the aluminum of the epoxy, which is what it's supposed to do. Very interesting. I'm going to pull this apart while we can. We'll just keep reusing. Yeah, it takes a long time to cure that inner stuff. There's so much mass to this part in the center. I mean, it's like a good almost three-eighths thick part. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's just keep experimenting here. This is fun. All right, so I'm doing that, doing this. And it just compressed really nicely. Which is uh, what I think what happened last time when we did the, did the single. Yeah, one. just kind of snugged down. Yeah. Yeah, we'd need a jig to load this with any kind of speed. Yep. But not horrible as a overall solution. Still lots of play, it's interesting. Until you uh, get the clamping force. Yeah, right. Let's turn it around this time just to see if anything happens. I wonder if that's what caused the, um, the leakage from the top, which is, uh, it may have started doing that before. Well, I'm gonna go know. back down. Our, our pressure, when the uh, compressor recycled, we went up to about 75. Ah. So that was a lot of pressure for this material. And I'm going to do back to two second inject since it seems to be going really fast. And we're at a good temp. Let me clear off the schmutz. Are we still, we're still, we're still good there. Okay. All right. Here goes. Oh, that's better. Yeah. And if we had a really long hold time, this would probably work 
just fine. Yeah, because you need, need to, I mean, with that material, it takes a while to cool It's down. a thick part. Oh, yeah. We're still getting a lot of flash, probably because it's hanging up on these edges. Yeah, so we might have to, to enlarge them a little bit. And that's very hot, very goopy. I mean, if you can feel that, like that, yeah. that is uh, not the natural flex. That is just hot goop. So what we need to do is, is keep it in the, the mold under clamp pressure. So longer. you have, yeah, longer. Yeah. After some more testing, we realized that the flash was caused by the top surface not being completely flat. There were some depressions, etc. So what we're doing here is putting some thin tape on the backside, and this will make the insert proud. Then what we did is we sanded it down to make it completely flat. That did make it proud. You can feel that lip now. Yep. So let's try uh, when you when you feel that. Yep. Okay. Yeah. 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 Let's try it now. After adding two layers of tape and then quite a bit of sanding, you can see that we got it completely flat. Sanded both Shimmed sides. And sanded. Shimmed and sanded. <laughs> Don't want to do that. Well, yeah, I know. I just. I guess we can always just blow it out of the part. No, I was thinking about our lungs. Yeah, that's true. I can't blow it out of my lungs. Let's try these separated a little bit too. Oh, wow. It just fell out. The mold slipped out. Well, it'll slip back in place. Will it? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to damage it. Okay. Same settings as before? Yep. We're at 40 PSI inject. Yeah, it's coming out the top again. So we're too long on the inject. A couple seconds where it's solution out. Yep. Let's see what happens. Ooh, well, I don't see a bit of flash on that. That is much better. And granted, we've got all that... The dust on it. Dust, but that is a clean, usable part. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, let's try it again now that we're taking the dust off of it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I find, out, find that uh, doing a few injections is a really good way to clean everything out of the molds. Yeah. That's interesting. So we've brought down our inject time, keeping everything the same. Nothing leaking out, or not very much. Yeah, just a little bit, but that's good. That's good. With it leaking out there and not flashing, that's a good sign. Mm-hmm. Probably just sanded down the flash issues. Yeah, that'd be a perfectly usable part for a lot of folks, even though we're having a weird fold. Maybe we need to inject a little more pressure. See that plastic fold? Yeah, I'm not seeing it very well from here. There's a, um, you can oh, see yeah. where it folded back on itself. Yep, yep. We're getting a little sink, but the, the flash is totally like gone. I mean, there's a little flash, but that's still, for the tolerances we're doing, that'd be a usable part. Yeah, and for, um, an epoxy mold, that's pretty good. Yeah, that is actually pretty impressive. And it's still very hot in the center, so to, to really produce anything with it, you'd have to hold these aside and yeah. let them really set up. Yeah, that's one advantage of uh, pure aluminum. It'll uh, pull the heat away faster. Yeah. One of the things I was curious to find out is, is how much this is going to pull the heat away. But we'll have to do, we'd have to do quite a few injection cycles to find out. Yeah, and right now we're loading so slowly. Yep. Each time it's hard to know what production would be like, but 
But so far, it seems yeah, like they're the holding details, up really well. Yeah, everything is holding up. Do you want me to decrease or... Actually, I feel like we should increase pressure, decrease time. Okay. See if we can get that plastic fold out of there. Let's go back up to 50. We're going to decrease down to five seconds. Oh, I didn't put in more material. That might come back to bite. Oh, yeah, and it's leaking out. Oh, interesting. So just that extra pressure really made it leak. Yep. Oh, yeah, it did. So this would be a test of flash then. Oh, interesting. Look at that. It's still really... The flash is gone. Yeah, I mean, getting marks like that is not surprising for something this thick. You know, with this much volume. Yeah. But we're not getting... And there's the sink starting. Yep. Interesting. So the part itself has its challenges, but the mold seems to be holding up really well. You can see the, I mean, even that's not flashing, but you can see where it's slightly, is that moisture? I don't know. I don't know what that is. It's on both sides. Yeah, it's it is curious. on both sides. Huh. I almost wonder if that's moisture or is it some sort of warpage? Let's keep going. Let's see okay. what happens. Let's just see how fast we can process and what happens. Okay, so I forgot to deck the top off, and so there was a noticeable step there, which is why we were getting the flash. So we put this on the belt sander, and it's uh, pretty much down to, you know, we can barely feel it. So that should work much better. We also, uh, the mold itself, the aluminum, got uh, pretty warm. The epoxy did warm up as well, but nowhere near as much, so we're going to have to do some uh, checking, but it may be that the thermal conductivity of the epoxy is similar to steel. Let's make sure we have lots of good stuff here to compress. Yep. And we're not worried about pressure yeah. as much anymore, so we're going to go high pressure to 60. High pressure, that's not high pressure, but you know what I mean. See if we can really pack it in without it splooshing out. And really push the mold. Yeah, look how much that pushed. Did you have it on the maximum hold time? Yes. I mean, uh, for injection time? Uh, injection time was seven seconds, hold okay. time's 10. Uh, this stuff just really compresses. Yep. Oh, okay, so we so got we some flat. Some oh, I cracked the mold. Ooh. Okay. And we were at 60 before. Aha. Uh -huh. We were at 60 before when we tried it, but we didn't have as tight a tolerances. And we were having all kinds of flashing and splooshing. And we had the top as essentially a pressure relief because it, it was not level. Yep. So all that pressure from 60 PSI was let out the top yeah, and it, let out the flash. <clears throat> and now the pressure's actually held. And, and it just this, cracked. And this is a lot of uh, pressure because uh, the cross section is pretty large for this. Interesting. And now it doesn't want to come out because it's actually molded in. Ooh, Ooh wow, that's really catastrophic crack. Should I try to take it out? Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant the uh, the plastic. Well, I can. It cracked all the way down in. Interesting. Yeah, like shattered down in. Like there was a, oh, maybe there was a, this much pressure had a bubble in it or something. Maybe there was a void in there. Yeah, some sort of, I can't get this out now. Okay. Hmm. I dug into this a little bit and uh, discovered that there was a large cavity of plastic in there, which had me really confused. So then I looked at the back and I noticed that this is actually close to flush. And before, it was uh, quite a bit below the surface. So my theory is that this got pushed down. So the force was enough that I was able to push down through the center and break things. And I'm really curious what happened. I'm going to see if I can get this out without uh, creating too much damage. Um, so I'm going to try. Yep, I can push. And it's coming out without too much effort. So that means I'll be able to see what's going on here. Okay, so 
I'm not sure what the black is here. Oh, that's plastic. Well, that's really interesting. So the black leaked out all over the place. Oh, actually, look at that. There's the answer. So you can see it fractured all the way around here. And then the plastic uh, basically filled up where the, uh, the space was. And so that's quite the failure. What that tells me is that this, I thought it was going to have good support across here, but clearly this was not supported enough and therefore it uh, blew out. So what I learned from this is that the way that I did it here is clearly not the right way to do it. I'm going to see if I can perhaps separate this. It should separate from the epoxy. Just curious. Yep, it's separating. And sure enough, there's the part that blew out. And there's the plastic that was... It's kind of hard to see because it's dark, but basically that's the big chunk of plastic that uh, went in between the section that blew out and that section there. Very interesting. As you saw there, it didn't quite work out as well as I would have liked. The mold probably would have survived really well had I had better support. So I definitely learned a few things from this. I need to support the back all the way across. And I also need a way to keep it from sliding out after I bake it so that it reaches the, the full temperature. So I have ideas on how I'm gonna change it for next time. And I therefore expect that next time It'll be quite successful and that it will last for a long time. The other thing that I have learned from this, which is a good thing, is that it's possible to use a single mold frame and then just uh, swap out the inserts that are epoxy. So I haven't fully tested that, but that seems like it's certainly a possibility. So this will help people who have the time and patience to do aluminum filling, uh, epoxy filling to be able to create their own molds and to get at least reasonable runs from them. But because of the failures that I had, and this video is already long, I'll wait till the next video before I show you the changes I'm gonna make, well, which might also include some ideas that you put in the comments below, to make a mold that actually works really well and lasts a long time. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up. Comment below, as I mentioned, with any suggestions. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time.